Hello, so today we're going to get right into designing a futuristic cityscape. So I work for Walt Disney Imagineering and I have to, on a daily basis, think about designing theme park attractions. And that first sketch you just saw right there is what we're going to end up with by the end of this video. So what I'm doing here is I... First of all, I'm using Procreate on my iPad Pro. It's an awesome program. It has a feature that is very helpful, especially when it comes to speed in your workflow. And that feature is called Draw Assist, where you can figure out your horizon line and your vanishing points, and you can turn the Draw Assist on, and it will do your drawing well, as you're drawing, it'll draw in perfect perspective and you can turn it on and off when you want to draw freely without being hindered by the perspective lines. But it just helps very quickly in my workflow. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just I'm starting to block out the environment and thinking about things like walkways, trying to be very practical. It's something that I have to do when we're designing uh, attractions because you have to think about how people are going to get around the environment how they're going to traverse uh, the area in which the attraction is in so I think very uh, practically when I'm doing an environment and I think about how the structure is made how it's built so that it gives that much more credibility to my environment and so again, right now I have that draw assist on that's helping me with my perspective. So I don't have to really think about that too much. I'm thinking about composition and shapes. I'm thinking about what's going to make an interesting looking city by playing around with shapes. And I mean, small, medium and large shapes by combining those that helps you come up with an interesting environment. So again, those vertical structures, I'm thinking about um, how this platform, how this building that's on this platform is held up. And my idea for this city is that it's going to be uh, built up on several levels. So I'm thinking about the understructure of what's holding uh, each of these buildings up. At the same time, I'm trying to frame up my piece, going back to the composition. So those darker lines off to the right, that's a hint at a building or some kind of structure I wanna put there that's gonna help frame the picture. And you use framing elements to not only uh, make the image interesting but also to keep the viewer's eye within the illustration or the frame so if i were a director which in this case i'm playing the part of the director because i want the audience or the viewer to look at a certain thing i have to be thinking about where i want them to look therefore I'm thinking about structures uh, and elements, props, what have you, that are around where I want the viewer to look, that are either pointing at that object, or in this case, my perspective lines are really going to go a long way in helping me force the viewer to look at where I want them to look. Now, normally I would start off with doing very small thumbnail sketches of uh, whatever the subject matter is. Of course, look at reference. But this is one of the cases in which, you know, in production, you have to work very fast. And sometimes you just have to go for it. You know, you can't be timid. And this is kind of um, what I call my freestyle way of working where I'm not doing a lot of the 
not looking at a bunch of reference. I did look at some reference before I started this piece. Um, and then I just put it away because I don't want I don't want the reference material. I don't want to be a slave to it. I want to design. I want to let what my friend calls happy mistakes happen. And you get those happy mistakes from your your imagination, from just drawing on what you've seen. And a, a good tip is to really draw from life, go out and draw architecture, draw environments from life, look at reference. Your mind will, will recall that. And it makes it easier to draw straight out of your, your head. So then... You can see that I, at first, was just playing around with those. Um, again, I I call them tick marks when I'm when I'm designing an environment. It's like I'm just kind of like dancing around the frame. I'm putting in these little lines that are just kind of indicating to me. I want some kind of shape there. I want something of notability to be there um, over here. You can see now I'm, I'm, I'm back to this foreground structure, trying to think about its shape. I don't want it to just have a boring boxy shape ultimately, but I'm just putting something there as a marker and the thing is, is the faster you put down things, if they don't work, the, the faster you find that out. But if you're if you go at it too timidly, then first of all, your workflow is going to take a long time. You will not make your deadlines and you you'll make bad choices. It's it's almost like when you're just going for it and you're drawing fast, you're just relying on your um, instinct. It's when things come out much better. So as you can see off to the right, I'm still thinking about that framing piece, that, that building that's in the foreground. Um, thinking about, you know, like a neon sign up there on the upper right corner hanging off the side of that building. But you can see that I've already determined that almost in the middle of this composition, that building, that central hub is going to be the main event that's that's where i want the viewer to uh, to um to look i'm sorry so i'm going in i'm just adding again more tick marks my my little um little shapes you know some of them inform what i'm thinking about in the future as far as the design of this this uh, this city and each of the buildings and then also it helps to early on start putting in some uh, figures and that's what you can see on the on the platform I'm starting to put in the figures and I'm basing the size of them on if you look at the size of the windows then a human being would be close to the size of those windows. So that helps to determine the scale. It helps you determine when you're designing something near where those figures are, how big it should be. So still in trying to think about, you know, what I want to do here, and I'm, I'm kind of playing around with story which is extremely important as I'm doing the drawing. Usually you want to think about what's the story of this place before you start drawing. But again, like I said, sometimes, you know, you just go for what you know. You just 
you're in that mood to just do something freestyle. And I thought maybe this would be a cool little platform area for some kind of spaceship, but um, I decided that did not work. So I'll just keep playing around with the design, but this is feeling pretty good to me. So yeah, next we're gonna think about um, refining the architecture and value what the lighting is doing. So what we learned today was we started off looking at um, just starting to build up shapes, starting uh, to think about the composition, what we want the viewer to look at and using our perspective lines, using the shapes, uh, big, medium, small to control the viewer's eye. And that's one of the important things we want to do is learn how to force the viewer to look at what we want them to look at. Play the part of the director when you're designing an environment. So again, in the next video, we're going to look at uh, refining the architecture. We're going to start playing with values, light and dark, uh, to establish the lighting and the mood. And for those of you who want a really good basic tutorial on perspective, my buddy Ruben Laura, that's R-E-U-B-E-N, Laura, L-A-R-A, -A, Art, Ruben Laura Art. Look for his YouTube channel, and he has some really good videos on that. So if you enjoyed this one, please give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe. Thank you.